What's up travelers? It's Liz from Means to Travel and I'm here today with Jocelyn from Walters World and Simply Jocelyn on YouTube. And today we're going to be talking all about a checklist of things to do before you leave on a long vacation. So essentially what we thought was really cool is that Jocelyn and her husband Mark have done a very similar video in the past on their channel and we thought it would be great to bring her in today to give some of those tips and add to you guys what we think would be a great list for when you leave on your trip. The first one that we're going to talk about is to make sure to hold your mail. So you can go onto the USPS's website and type in when you're going to be gone on your trip, what your address is, and they're going to hold your mail for that duration of time. But they only hold it for 30 days. Exactly. <laughs> See? We, got, we have her in here for a reason. <laughs> Because sometimes you take a trip that is over 30 days or you've gone to live somewhere for a few months and that causes issues. And don't forget about your newspapers either, right? True. Yeah, and so that's definitely going to be the telltale sign that you're on vacation having a ton of newspapers <laughs> piled up on your driveway. So um, even if you can't hold them necessarily, just try to figure out some way that somebody in the neighborhood maybe can take them in while you're gone. Absolutely. It's Most of these are pretty self-explanatory, but they might just be things that you don't think of, like um, pay all your bills. So I know most of us pay things online, but sometimes we've got one or two bills that come via mail. So you need to set up like a bill pay or something to make sure that you can pay those while you're gone um, or just pay ahead on certain things. Absolutely. The next thing is that you want to make sure that you eat through your fridge and also clean out your fridge. <laughs> so, um, who's come home to stinky milk? <laughs> I have. Definitely have come home to a lot of weird things in the fridge before. <laughs> so, just making sure that it's kind of cleared out of all of those things that'll spoil. The one kind of pro tip that I have is I always leave in the freezer something that I could have if say my flight home is really really late and I get in late and I don't have anything to eat. So making sure that you have that one thing in mind that you can have when you get back that won't spoil. <laughs> We're but, noodle yeah. people. We've always got noodles and rice in the pantry that are like a quick easy thing that we can just sort of throw together. Perfect. Yeah. Exactly. Another thing that you need to think about is um, depending upon the weather and the time of year you want to arrange for things like lawn care um, and shoveling your walks because it's a big telltale to um, you know unsavory sorts of people who might want to break in your house if your um, driveway is the only one that's not been shoveled, right? So if there's snow on the ground and things like that, have those things already done for you. Um, just set that up ahead of time. Absolutely. Next thing is you want to make sure to take out all of your garbage and recycling in advance. <laughs> um, I've definitely come home to having not done that and it's not the most pleasant thing to return to after a long amazing trip. <laughs> <laughs> also um, on that note, yeah. make sure all the small people in your house flush the toilets. Um, we actually run through our house and flush all the toilets just because, yeah. right? <laughs> exactly. And then even if they're not small, just make sure the toilets are flushed. <laughs> it's a very important tip. Pro move nobody by that needs, one. Nobody needs to know about that, right? No, but, but it's, it's just, true. It's coming home to like a fresh, clean home. Yeah. <laughs> so on, on that note of having a fresh, clean home, uh, make sure all your dishes are clean. Um, there have been times where my husband and I both thought the other one ran the dishwasher and neither of us did, and we opened up the dishwasher when we got home and holy stinking high heaven. I mean, it's just <laughs> nasty. So, um, you know, the, if, when you come home to a clean house, you've been like traveling and you're tired and you just want to drop into bed. Those little things cleaning up really make, um, make it nice to come home and just relax. Absolutely. Even if you're needing to run the dishwasher the night before because you leave really early or something, but you still have breakfast dishes, hand wash those, put them away. You're going to be really grateful that yes, you didn't like glad you did. leave them in the sink and they get all oh, in the mold. And <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> You'll thank us later. <laughs> the next tip that we have is really if you're going to be gone for a long time, time maybe longer than like a 10 day trip is we're kind of talking more like a month or two or something like that and that's to make sure any batteries that are going to be essential mm -hmm. while you're gone for let's say your smoke detector or your Absolutely. car key batteries are fresh or if they're kind of on the brink maybe just change them out because you don't want to come home to your smoke alarm having been beeping for <laughs> months um, and also that's the last thing you want to do when you get home is to figure out which one it is the absolute last thing especially if you're jet lagged <laughs> <Beep>. um, 
<laughs> and then if your car keys don't work, you might get stuck at the airport and then, oof, that'd be rough. Yeah, there, there are small issues like that that you don't think of. But we've all, we've experienced these things, so you don't have to. Yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. So my favorite day of the week is clean sheet day. I absolutely love clean sheet day. So before we go on a trip, and it may be the night or the day before, you know, I try to change the sheets. Um, I also, this is a pro tip, I throw a couple dryer sheets under between the sheets, um, between the top sheet and the bottom sheet, or between the top sheet and the comforter. So when I get home and I get cozy in my bed that first time after a long trip, and I'm like, oh, that is a pro so tip. I love good. this. <laughs> Outdoor fresh bounce. Oh, I'm happy. That's so, amazing. Yeah, so clean sheets. Um, also, try to get some of your laundry done because um, if you've got, like, sweaty gym clothes and they're sitting in in the laundry for like a month or something they just kind of get a little bit stinky so try to get those nastier things washed when you wash those sheets absolutely and on top of that if you come back from a trip a lot of times you're coming back with a suitcase full, full of, of dirty, dirty laundry so just making sure that you don't feel completely overwhelmed by what is now real life chores <laughs> is going to be key yeah, absolutely <laughs> the next thing that we're going to talk about is having timers set for the lights that you have in your house just so that way it can deter any sort of criminals from thinking that those people are definitely on vacation right. and the pro tip that I've actually learned from you guys on this one is to make sure that your timers for your lights are kind of at different times so that right. way if somebody it really is monitoring your house then they're not going to think that you know um, and it's the same time every day we, I have my I have house lights that are on timers all of the time so that even when we're home, they're just on the timer because then I never have to think about it. I never touch them. They just go on about the time I need them to come on <laughs> all the time anyway. Perfect. And, you know, we're all using those good LED lights and stuff, so we're not using a lot of electricity, but they're just there and they're on. Um, and I know everybody's got, like, smart houses and smart everythings. And so there are a lot of those things out there too. So yeah. it's easy to set different random times for different rooms and things like that. So some lights really you can even in. control from an app. Um, Absolutely. So that's another Yeah, you can too. you can you can be in Egypt and turning off your lights and yeah. <laughs> you know you're you're in Monaco and you're opening your garage door because your neighbor needs to get the lawnmower out or something. It's you know, it's great. The <laughs> technology, you guys. <laughs> So this is something that um, I have learned through friends who are in construction. Um, it is important to turn off the water to your washer. Um, it's just at the back, there are two little taps, a red and a blue, and you just turn them so that they're opposite the way they are when they're on, right? You just flip them over. Um, because if something were ever to happen with your water main and um, the water coming to your house and those are on, you can literally flood your house like that because there's so much water that can come through those um so it's definitely something that I do every time we leave the house. I had never thought about this I know like turn off your water in the winter time because mm -hmm. of frozen pipes Absolutely. but this is awesome <laughs> <laughs> this is no matter where you live whether your pipes will freeze yeah. or not it's definitely something and I've had friends um who work like I said in construction who have seen this happen and um have seen the flooded homes so I'm not doing it I'm not having a flooded house <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um, the next one is to make sure that all of your valuables in your house, um, that you definitely would be devastated if they got stolen, make sure those go into a safe deposit box or a safe or just somewhere where, you know, they're going to be protected while you're gone. Derek and I opt for an in-home safe. I know there's people that can take the stuff to the safe deposit box, but um, certainly something to add to the list. So something else to consider is maybe hiring a house sitter. We often have house sitters. Um, if we're going away for maybe just the weekend, we won't have a house sitter. But if we go and we take long trips sometimes, you know, for many weeks or even months at a time, we always get somebody to come and live in our house. They take care of our dog and, you know, they're just trusted people. Sometimes they're people that um, we, we've known for years and years. And there are all sorts of different um, companies out there that vet people. So if you don't have somebody that you particularly know, um, these people have been through background checks and things like that. Um, we've never used that. We've always had friends do it. But it's also a really great thing to, to give, like, um, 
college kids who are having an internship or something, oh, yeah. that's a great thing for them to be able to live somewhere for like a summer or something when they have no money coming in. <laughs> so watching your house and your dog might just be perfect. Right? So smart. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, we've never had a house sitter, but we've definitely needed to ask around for people to just water our plants, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so we don't come home to brown, brown leaves. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely something to keep in mind for it, whatever your house needs. And with your house sitter, make sure you leave a really good detail list. I mean, it doesn't have to be astronomical, but like, you know, if you have a succulent and then you've got like a fig tree that needs tons of water or something, you might want to tell them that this gets like a lot and this gets not. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We actually um, put post-it notes on the base of each plant while that's we're gone. That's a great idea. That says, <laughs> that says, you know, twice a week or right. <laughs> that right. sort of thing. I think that's great. Makes total sense. I mean, plants, pets, they need some instruction manuals, right? <laughs> now, the next one that we're going to talk about is to make sure to double check your insurance policies um, because you want to, <laughs> if you're not home, there could be some just variables in how they would work if you, say, have a frozen pipe or something like that. So, plan for your house to have that, but also plan for you to have that because oh. um, we have. We have visited more ERs outside of the United States than I care to count um, because we have kids and things happen. And, and, you know, sometimes you have a baby when you're abroad. <laughs> Those things just pop out, you know. Um, but, but knowing what your insurance policy is, both home and away, is really important. The next one is to make sure to set your thermostat. So we opt for a Nest in our home. It's a smart thermostat. We can set it from anywhere, but if you, say, have just one of the wall-mounted ones that is more of a manual setup, then you're going to want to do that before you leave. If you do have the smart thermostat, you can still do it from your phone, but make sure you remember to do it, and make sure you remember when you come back to reset it to like off of eco mode. So perhaps set an alarm on your phone for as soon as you land (laughs) (laughs) at at the airport on your return trip because you're probably going to be pretty tired from all that traveling and not thinking about your house until you walk in and it's 80 degrees. And so... Or contrary. Or or 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, that's just a one thing that we try to do to make our lives a little bit easier and save some money on our on our electricity and bills. Save the planet a little bit too. It's not Absolutely. much, but it's something. So as you're setting that thermostat, please set your home alarm. Um, you know, that is like kind of your first, first line of defense um, when you're not going to be around is yep. just to have that alarm set. And there are so many different kinds out there now. Um, you know, a lot of them are smart things where you can mess with it. You can see who's coming and going from your house and everything else. Just just don't forget to do it. Yeah. I will add, we have um, a alarm system that they will call our cell phone if it gets triggered. And let's say we are traveling internationally. It's going to call our number kind of not via a Wi-Fi connection. So you might want to consider making sure that whoever's phone is going to be most reachable while you travel within your group of travelers, your family, whoever you're, you're with. Um, is the one set to your home alarm system. So typically, for example, Derek's phone is on the entire time when we travel. My phone is on airplane mode. So we would want to make sure that Derek's number is the one in that system. That's one. And um, a lot of companies also give you a backup person. So you might have them maybe call like a trusted neighbor or friend. And that leads into our next one is that when you leave, you should definitely tell somebody that lives nearby, hey, we're going to be gone. But you don't need to tell your whole neighborhood. No. But just, <laughs> just maybe like the one or two people that can kind of lay eyes on your house. Like I have a friend and I always tell her and her husband, I'm like, hey, we're going to be gone. These are the dates. You know, yeah. just lay eyes on my house now and again and make sure everything's fine with or without an alarm. It's just nice for them to, you know, I don't know. It just gives me a little bit of calm. Yeah, right? you can rest <laughs> easier while you're traveling. Yeah. Somebody's kind of you know, on it. Well, and if something crazy happened, you know, like, um, who knows, maybe there's a tornado or I mean, you never know what can happen while you're gone. So just having somebody that can be, you know, your point person is really important. Absolutely. So thank you so much, Jocelyn, for coming on the channel. Um, those are all of our 
tips for what to do to prepare your house for a longer trip. Hopefully you guys liked this video and liked having Jocelyn on. Jocelyn, can you let everybody know where they can find you? Sure. On Instagram, I am at Jocelyn Walters World. Um, you'll find us on YouTube at Walters World and at Simply Jocelyn. Love it. Definitely go check out her channel for more travel tips, cooking tips, lifestyle tips. She's a wonderful source. Thanks. So we're super glad that she was able to join us today. Hopefully you guys liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs, thumbs up, up down below. <laughs> and don't forget to press the red subscribe button below too if you want to see more travel videos on this channel to come. Thanks everybody for watching. Cheers. Happy travels. Bye. Bye. Hey travelers, don't forget to subscribe and let's hang out more. Here are some links to other helpful travel videos on my channel and press that notification bell so you don't miss any new and awesome travel videos to come.